Switzer Show. The Barry Switzer Show is brought to you by the people of Kermagee Corporation, putting natural resources to work for you. Here's Barry with Ron Thulin. Hi, welcome again to our show. This past weekend, the University of Oklahoma Sooners whipped the Oregon State Beavers 42 to three. Wasn't much of a ball game, but it was another win, Ron. Coach, I tell you what, it was your 100th game as head coach. Now, we're not gonna let them forget this. See, we're, we're a pretty good bunch of guys here, and we weren't gonna let this opportunity. 86, <laughs> 11, and blue three. blue velvet. <laughs> blue flannel motor, yeah, blue velvet blue. motor. And I'll tell you what, you know, we did not want to pit. I've been practicing all day for this, because in Pittsburgh, where I come from, we don't have this stuff. This is a prize. No. I didn't know we were going to have this. Uh, I know. Either did I. <laughs> no, I tell you what, we're not going to let this pass up. And while we're just kind of celebrating here for Coach Switzer's 100th game as head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, we've kind of brought a couple of plays just to jog your memory about some of the games previous. We're going to take a look at it right now. I think that I'm a winner, a fighter, and a competitor. And I believe that. Our football players that came to the University of Oklahoma, student athletes, they are that type of individual, too. That. That's a surprise. Ron Turner and Steve Newman, who have been with you the entire way, wanted to do that as just kind of a tribute to you, Coach. Well, Looking appreciate back. Appreciate that. Ron, well, Steve, thank you. <laughs> Looking back, Coach, what's the most memorable game, the most unforgettable Winner game? Winner or loss. Easily. <laughs> either way, either way. Well, I tell you what, uh, you have them both ways. Wow. Uh, the big win, of course, is we've had a lot of big wins, you know, in uh, 86 since I've been head coach. Uh, Ohio State, we, the field goal, Von Shaman kicked there is a, is a great win. Uh, 
Uh, Texas, my first year, defeating Texas with the largest margin of defeat they've ever been defeated by. Uh, Michigan in the Orange Bowl. Uh, just kind of a list of them. Well, just a lot of the Nebraska games. But uh, I tell you, one of the most memorable defeats was uh, in 78 against Nebraska. Uh, That's the best team in the thought. country. We go up there and we fumble it. Uh, I talked to our football team about that. You know, not many times a football team has an opportunity to, uh, for a second chance. You got to 60 minutes. You, you play that season, and that's it. You got to go prove you the best. Uh, we lost that opportunity, and uh, Lincoln, uh, we fumbled at the three yard line. Billy Sims makes a great run, fumbled nine times that day, only lose 17 to 14, but we got a chance to play them again. And not yeah. many teams ever get to do that. And of course, we won the football game handily in the, in the Orange Bowl. We were the best team in the country, and that hurt. That de defeat there probably stands out of more, any one game more than any because we would have been national champions. That had been our third national championship. You look back, I don't think there's any too many coaches <clears> in the country that can say that they've been through the exciting games and the tradition that Oklahoma has provided the past, uh, well, the past 100 games. The Florida State's last year, you know, uh, there has been a lot of exciting moments. I forgot about those. Not a gray <laughs> hair on his head either, I can honestly say that. Well, it's, better, <laughs> it's better to turn gray and turn loose, though. <laughs> I like that. Coach, I'll tell you what, uh, looking back now, and you got another hundred ahead of you, how about a little Bear Bryant record or anything like that? We got oh, another couple hundred ahead gosh. of you? You're a young man <laughs> still, gosh, Coach. Hey, you, know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Bud Wilkinson was 47 when he retired. You know, I'm yeah. 44, you know, and he got out a young man. Coach Bryant, what is he, 70, 68, well, 70, Let's see, 69? how many games would that be when you're that age? That's a couple hundred. That's, that's <laughs> too many. Uh, I don't even think about that. You know, I just try to fight th through this season here and think about next, go out and recruit and try to get ready for the 82 season. Let's don't think too far ahead. I've looked at our schedule in the future here, and it's, it's frightening who we've got <laughs> to take play. take one year at a time. Huh? Coming up on uh, the Barry Switzer Show, we'll have our Sooner trivia question, followed by a word from the fine folks at Kerr-McGee. From out of the blue, a driving way to save money. New Blue Velvet Motor Oil from Kerr McGee. A special friction reducer gives you more miles out of every tankful. You save gas. Blue Velvet's long life quality protects against engine wear for better performance. Use New Blue Velvet and fine KM gasolines for the combination that gives you a driving way to save money. From out of the blue. Engine start. We have made engine start. On April 12, 1981, NASA sent America's first space shuttle on its maiden flight into space. Kerr-McGee Corporation supplies ammonium perchlorate, the oxidizer used in the space shuttle's solid rocket boosters. Kerr-McGee's 11,000 employees are working hard to keep America a leader in energy here on Earth and a leader in outer space. First round draft choice, Baltimore Colts played on the world championship uh, football team against Miami. I think they defeated Miami in the uh, Super Bowl. Eddie Hinton, who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I was just waiting to finish, <laughs> waiting to finish up. Coach, Oregon State this week. Uh, it's tough to tell how well the guys improved in that because it was such a blowout and the game was over first half. Well, that's what we wanted to happen, Ron. You know, I think the great thing about winning the game uh, easily uh, in, in the first half is you got to play a lot of players. We played, uh, I think someone said, 72 players in the ball game. 13 players carried the football. That's great for morale. You know, you yeah. practice all week, and a lot of players, second, third team players, very seldom ever have an opportunity to play and play that much in a ball game, and they did. And before, uh, and you've seen uh, seasons before, we have had games like this where we've been able to play many, many players in our non-conference uh, uh, wins because of the score. Uh, but this year we haven't had that opportunity. And of course, uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to play that many players. Well, it wasn't hard to pick Barry's offensive and defensive plays of the game. Let's take a look at the offensive play of the game. And this is a play that Coach, you really didn't want called, first of all, to be Well, I told, I told Galen, I said, you know, there's no need to throw the ball. They're talking about the tight ends wide open. They're not respect. I said, well, they never respect the tight end. No one ever does. And Jeff Williams, of course, moved from fullback to tight end. Daryl Shepard threw the ball well. And 
He's running wide open behind the secondary, and Jeff catches his uh, pass for the touchdown. Someone at the press conference said, well, boy, says that Jeff caught his uh, uh, touchdown. They said, well, was Steve happy? And I said, Steve doesn't even know Jeff's his brother. <laughs> <laughs> I kid Jeff, uh, Steve all the time. Here's Our a offensive defensive guard. Here's a, here's a great play by uh, Albert Watts, the freshman from uh, Los Angeles, California. He Oski's uh, an out route squatted in front of the receiver there. And takes it about 40 yards for a touchdown, and we had to talk about that right there. <laughs> Wasn't doing calisthenics, he was doing the dance. Save the dancing for the band members. That's right, for the dance at night. Coach, you know what, uh, there's a sidelines at Oklahoma football game are very busy. All the coaches are working. And this week on Inside Oklahoma Football, we featured on one of the coaches, Mike Jones. Here's Steve Newman. Here we go, oh, here we go. Let's go, Chip, let's go. Now, we got to hang on to the ball. Hey, if you have to remind them, we got to hold the plays and say, hey, hang on to football, okay? Left, 16. Mike Jones coaches Oklahoma's receivers. On a Saturday afternoon in the fall, Mike is also the vital link between the Sooner Brain Trust high in the press box and those who carry out their orders on the turf. He must know OU's complex offensive language inside and out. Mike Jones also must be a communicator, a motivator. Here we go. Let's go. Right X, 13 handoff. Tell him, let's go, man. Hey, let's move it. Let's go. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Gotta hurry. Within 25 seconds, strategy is evaluated, discussed, and decided on by voices coming through headsets and those trying to talk over them. Jones listens to them all, all at once, then relates the decision to one of his player messengers. Get a block, David. Here we go. Left, 16. The strategy coming from the coaches in the press box is a foreign language. What, what can you throw on them? Have they thought about anything? Yeah, I thought we were talking. Coach, probably the quick streak, you know, maybe out of the, the playing five cards, T flag or something. RX, yeah. The expectations are simple enough that this wishbone dialect will translate into points on the scoreboard. Fans cheer, players execute. Orders like Elmer 12G lead Texas outside or something just as foreign. Left X, 39. Got a good job now. Unlike most formations, the wishbone demands some decisions be made not only by those who call the plays, but by those who carry them out. That's a good job by Darrell leading that. That's good job. Good job, Darrell. Chef. Good, good read, Darrell. Good read. Dozens of decisions. Some work, some don't. Last Saturday, they worked for 42 points. Right, right double 14. Don't hang on by that score this time. Right double what? Three minutes. Right double 14. Here we go now. What, there's a lot of action on the sideline. How do you guys keep all it straight? Well, I, <laughs> we don't sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time with the, you know, we used to, I was thinking about when you're doing this feature here, in 1973, they had one of those crazy rules in college football where a player, now we have, and that was the only year that we didn't have, a player went in on the football field, had to play a play before he came off. We had Scotty Hill, was a quarterback, 1973. <laughs> He runs on, he's a freshman, he runs on the field, calls a play in the huddle and runs, runs off. off. You didn't have to have that rule, it was not uh, yeah. in four set years. So they changed it back because it looked so ridiculous. Scotty Hill running off the field, teams all over the country were running their play, uh, plays in and off the field with their, now we do it with our receivers. Does he letter for that? <laughs> yeah, he got the letter for that. <laughs> okay, I just was curious if that goes as far as playing time. We have a couple of very special guests. They're from the defensive line of the University of Oklahoma. Let's take a look at, first of all, them in action and coach, you may want to introduce them. Two sophomore defensive tackles. The first one we show right here will be number 80, Ricky Bryan, the sophomore from Coeta, Oklahoma. Tackles the quarterback on the option play, sprint out, and 
Of course, Ricky's a sophomore. He's six foot five, about 255 pounds, and still growing. This is a great play right here. They run the counter option. He pitched the ball, and back comes outside, and Ricky comes from his defensive tackle position for about a three-yard gain there. You'll see the ball pitched here again on the option play, and you'll see a different pursuit angle. You see the split receiver knock our corner back down, but there's Ricky knocks the back out of bounds. It was a great defensive play there. That was a great stick. I was on the sideline of that. He Here's really Bob Slater, 68, uh, sophomore from Tulsa, Oklahoma, making the play in pursuit. Bob's a good runner, got good speed, and chases the quarterback down from behind. Here, the quarterback has to scramble, and you see Bob, 68, pursue and make the play on the quarterback there after he had to run. And now we get a chance to meet him in person. Coach may want to introduce to you. The guy on the left here, uh, all the hair on top of his head there <laughs> is uh, Ricky Bryan, uh, Coeta, and the uh, guy on his right is Bob Slater from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Bob Slater, you were uh, a little skinny person, I understand, when you came out of high school, and uh, Coach Switzer was telling me on Tuesday that he wanted you to beef up, but he recognized your quickness and your pursuit of the ball. You still got to hit the weights a little bit, huh? Yeah, I still need to gain about another 15 or 20 pounds. Uh, I, he told me about 40 more. I uh, <laughs> told him he was going to take up a scholarship. If he did. <laughs> I, when we recruited him, I saw a film. Merv Johnson brought the film in. He says, there's an old skinny boy. What was what high school were you at, Bob? From Tulsa Mason. In Tulsa, Tulsa Mason. And we looked at this old skinny boy on film here, and I said, boy, he chases the ball real well. You know, he really played with great effort, and he played hard every down, but he had no bulk. And when they brought him in for the visit, I'm telling you, he is the skinniest, frail-looking, bird-chested guy. So I told his family, and I told him, he was going to Tulsa. You were going to Tulsa, right? Yeah. He was going to Tulsa. OSU didn't want him. No one wanted him. But I said, if that guy could weigh, you know, 240 or 250, he could be a player because of the way he goes about his business. Quickness. So, So I told him, I said, I told his parents, I said, you won't play as a freshman. You won't play as a sophomore. We'll redshirt you. We'll work on weights, try to get <clears> you big, and... Uh, and you'll be a player for us. So far, everything's worked out for him. He's playing right now. Ricky Bryan from Coweta, Oklahoma. I understand you're a wheat farmer. or <laughs> Your dad had to buy a tractor, wasn't it, to take your place or something like that? The story goes. Is that true? Uh, I don't know about <laughs> that, but he did. He bought him a bigger tractor my senior year because me and my older brother was gone, and he needed uh, some bigger equipment to handle what me and my brother helped him with while we was in high school. Now, you're recruited as a tight end. Now you're on defense. Uh, what's your preference? Do you have any? That was recruiting talk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play offense. Catch a lot of passes, right? <laughs> 30 passes a game. Did you, would you rather play defense well, or offense? Or? When I came in as a freshman, we had to go on uh, both uh, offense and defense. And I don't know, they put me at defensive tackle and defense. And I felt pretty comfortable there. And after the Colorado game or Texas game, I can't remember which, last year, Coach Switcher told me they were going to go ahead and move me. And I was really satisfied with the switch because I felt comfortable at that position. That's a great coach. We're satisfied. There. I was going to say, that's good coaching there. Bob Slater, all the talk, a lot of the media people sometimes always get involved. We talk about sophomores and experience. And you get, as a sophomore, you get tired of hearing all that, of all of us always complaining about sophomores and stuff? Well, not really, because for the most part it's true. And we know we've still got a lot to learn and a lot of improvement to be made. And you just keep working on it. Ricky Bryant, um, some of the media right now comparing you to one of the Selmans, Lucius Selman. And, and you know your big eight defensive player of the week. Well, he's better than me. Lucius. I don't know about Lucius. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said Lucius. I was gonna start out slow. We're going we'll to kill guy. Lucius. So, <laughs> Lucius was he'll slow, slow folks. He, he, he won't speak to me for a week. I tell you, <laughs> he'll, probably, he'll probably be running me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Brian running. He's better than me. <laughs> but you know when somebody compares you like Coach Selman, you know my goodness. Well, what what's your thoughts on that? Well, I can't help from be to be glad about the comparison, but. I know it, and Coach Switzer knows I've got a long way to go before I'll ever be as good as any of the Selmans. Oh, well, maybe Lucius is not that far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I've got a long ways to go. I'm just going to keep working hard and keep trying to improve. And Barry, you mentioned at the beginning that you were afraid that he might go to Oklahoma State because well, of. Well, every time I went to his home, he lives way out in the country. You know, what's the name of that little mound on the right as you go out there? Tater Hill. Tater Hill. Tater Hill. <laughs> he, lives out, he lives out past Tater Hill. Oh, now. that's good. He doesn't oh, live in Coeda. He, he lives the other side of Tater Hill. Oh, I know. Well, that. We get out there, you know, and every time I go out there to see, <laughs> you know, Jack's gone. He drives the truck, that's his daddy, and mama's in the kitchen. And I asked where Rick is. Well, he's down in the pasture walking his calf. <laughs> you know, he's walking, he's walking what, his uh, calf. 4 H or what? Future Farmers of America. Uh, that's right. And I said, and I was really worried about him going to OSU. I could just see. <laughs> Walking a calf, you have a flea collar on it, a leash or something, and just. Well, this calf weighed about 1,300 pounds. <laughs> what do you do, tackle it just for practice? 
Shit, it kicked me in the head. <laughs> 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 kicked me in the head. <laughs> that, just, that prepares you to that be a defensive player. <laughs> Bob, say, why did you come to Oklahoma State of Tulsa? What was the big sway? Well, I just really felt I'd be cutting myself short if I didn't try and go play for the best team that gave me the opportunity and his chance to be great. <laughs> no, no regrets now, huh? None at all. Let me tell you another thing. We talk about football. Both of them are outstanding students. Uh, exactly. Ricky, what was your grade point last year? Well, first semester was 375. I ended up with 3-3. 3-3 overall for two semesters. Well, what good. was yours, Bob? It's a 269. 269. What, what's your major in engineering, isn't it? Uh, it was. I'm in uh, petroleum land management now. Petroleum PLM major. What about you, Ricky? Business management. Business management. Well, that beat me in my college career, my entire career right there. <laughs> How did, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people don't realize that you guys are full-time students first and football players second. Uh, you know, some of those who weren't athletes in college re don't realize how difficult it is. How is it for you, Ricky? You know, I mean, you've got big games, and everybody talks about, you know, Nebraska or Missouri, but forget about the test in one of your classes. How does that? Uh, how do you balance that out? Well, you can't do that. You can't forget about tests because if you start flunking tests, pretty soon you won't be out there on the football field. Yeah. But oh, uh, you just gotta manage your time right, yeah. and instead of going out and partying sometimes, or you know, just messing around, yeah. you gotta stay home and study a little bit extra, and you know. There's time for football and there's time for studies, and you gotta just do the you, do your best at both of them. Bob, did you have any adjustment? Was there any big adjustment from high school to here, and as far as studies go? Well, I found out you had to study a lot more here in high school. It's a lot easier to make your grades. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ricky hit on management of time is a key thing. Most students, uh, young people, come off to school to college really don't know how to manage your time. Well, Self-discipline, and I think that's the key to being successful in academics in, in a university atmosphere. Uh, but you're talking about n nightlife and partying, there ain't no party at Tater Hill, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do at Tater Hill? Walk your calf, obviously. <laughs> Go out and take your calf out for a walk, and who knows what'll happen then. <laughs> oh, oh, Tater Hill, I love that. Rick, I tell you what, I don't mean to laugh at that, but that is one of the all-time great names I've ever heard. Tater Hill. I'm not going to say you're from Coweta anymore on the news and all that. We're going to say from Tater Hill, Oklahoma. Hey, you got a way they got the name for it, that hill's what the funny part. There's a big old rock sitting on top of the hill and looks like a potato. Oh, no. Someone ended up blowing it off thinking there was treasure under it or something. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the Brian boys. That's the Brian boys. Off. You know how those people are Coweta are, folks. Well, just thinking about 10 or 15 years from now, we might be having them on the Barry Switzer Show again. Ricky and Bob is a Where Are They Now feature. But for now, <laughs> we've got a former player before. A message from the fine folks at Kerr McGee. Clendon Towns, an All-American halfback in 1957. Bud Wilkinson later called him the best athlete he ever coached. Today, Clendon Thomas is president of an Oklahoma City chemical corporation. In recent years, more and more electric utilities and large industries have been turning to an old friend, coal. And Kerr McGee is helping to meet the demand for this plentiful source of energy. In addition to finding and producing oil, gas, and uranium, Kerr McGee has coal reserves in seven states and at present operates two mines in the Powder River Basin of Wyoming. These mines, located near Gillette, produced more than 10 and a half million tons of this buried sunshine in 1980 ranking Kerr McGee as one of the top 20 coal producers in the United States. From Wyoming, the coal is shipped to customers in Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma. New mines will be opened as the demand for coal increases. A top priority in Kerr McGee's coal operations is to return the mined land to a condition better than its original natural state, while continuing to work hard to meet America's need for this most abundant fossil fuel. Coach, which are coming into the Colorado game, you're on a two-game win streak. Now, have you improved in those two games the way you wanted to when you told us after the Texas game? No, oh, I think we've improved. Our competition is not as good as what it has been. You know, Texas, Iowa State, uh, USC were pretty good football teams, but uh, uh, the Kansas and Oregon State aren't that caliber. And I think any time you go out and play, you improve, and our football team has had an opportunity to play uh, uh, 
two games that uh, we've won easily, uh, even though we dominated the football game. I think any time a player goes out and competes and plays hard and gets a lot of snaps, that you become a better player. And so I think that's happened, and hopefully that we get better every week because when it gets down to Missouri and Nebraska and Oklahoma State, I think are the three best football teams in the Big Eight Conference we've got left to play. Uh, they're at the end of the schedule, which fits us, a young football team, and I think that uh, and we'll know then what kind of team we've got because exactly. those two teams and, and even Oklahoma State is a very fine defensive football team. They've got their problems on offense, but Missouri's a solid team and Nebraska's a solid team just like they always have been. So I think we'll answer those questions at a later date than we can answer them right now. It's coming down to that time. Last year, if you remember, the final score was 82-42 against Colorado, but they are a much improved team. We've got some highlights of them. Their record doesn't show it this year, but they're a lot better defensively. You bet they are. They play a lot better than they've uh, indicated by their, their one loss record. Uh, this is the uh, Colorado on offense against Iowa State. They've got more speed and quickness on offense uh, than they had a year ago. They've got good skilled people outside, good receivers. They've thrown the football well. They've got some problems on defense, and they've got some injuries right now. But you, you take, for example, a year ago, Everyone dominated Colorado, scored a lot of points on them. Uh, OSU beat them 42 to 7. Colorado beat, o uh, you know, OSU this year. Well, how, how does a team improve 40 points? Right. That concerns me because we won by 40 points. They will play us a lot better. And, and depending on what happens in the ball game, a team like that can win the football game. They should have won three football games. They should have beaten Washington State and and could have, except for two blocked punts, and they lost the football game. They could have won three ball games right now. They played very well against Iowa State. 17 to 10. It was, uh, it was a close ball game. And, uh, of course, it was played in the cold. You couldn't tell it was spitting snow up there <laughs> at, uh, Lousy at weather. Colorado at Boulder. But uh, they're playing better than their 2-5 uh, record. Uh, Chuck Fairbanks had a comment this week, Coach. He says, to have real success against Oklahoma, you must match up with them physically. Does Colorado match up with you physically? I hope not. I don't think that physically... Uh, our offensive line is very physical, and I think that's what he's referring to. You win the football games with defense and offensive line. I don't care what type of ability you have in running. Everyone's got speed and quickness in running backs. If you've got the people up front, you win with those two areas. You win with the Ricky Bryans playing defense, and you win with Terry Crouches on offense. And, and our offensive line is the strength of our football team. And I think when people play us and get ready to play us, they look at Oklahoma's offensive line and say that's the dominant area of our football team. And physically, I don't think Colorado matches up defensively with our offensive line. And I think that's what Chuck's concerned about. I read his quotes. And mm -hmm. He says you've got, you know, or, or you start with the, the middle of their offensive line and that's what you've got to contend with and people have problems with. And USC did and, uh, you know, people, you know, our, our, our guards played well against Texas. Our centers played well. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, I think that uh, you got to play over well overall in every phase, but up front, that's the key. And that, that, I think that's what he's talking about. Coach, must, much success against Colorado. We'd like to remind you again, don't forget, high school football this Friday. If you're around Tulsa, check out Coweta High School in Tater Hill. Coach? <laughs> you reckon they got a Kerr McGee service station top I'm of sure Tater they Hill? do. If they do, stop in and get the good products that Kerr McGee always produces. For Oklahoma head coach Barry Switzer, I'm Ron Thulin. We'll see you next week.